Hey, what's happening, FTD fam? So here's a video about Mufti Meng. Is Mufti Meng spreading false information about Islam, false teachings. What's going on here, guys? Guess what? He was slaughtering every chicken. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Can you believe it? That's not halal. He's supposed to have said Bismillah, Allahu Akbar, in the name of Allah, and Allah is the greatest. You don't just go around saying Salam Alaikum and eating your food. Assalamu Alaikum, brothers and sisters. I hope you are well. Words can impact us very deeply. Positive talk can boost us, perhaps change the day, and deep down can impact our lives as well. Mufti Meng, a man who needs no introduction is the most prominent, prolific faith-based Islamic motivational speaker. He's loved across the globe by millions of Muslims and non-Muslims. Mufti Menk is the eighth of nine children. His father Musa Menk is an Imam in a masjid in Zimbabwe. Mufti Menk is known for his wit and wisdom and many young men and women enjoy listening to him. I mean, don't you? Yeah. Love, happiness, kindness, self-worth are essential for human dignity. Islam is a path that promotes, celebrates human dignity. There is no quick fix for Islamophobia. We need to continuously and consistently promote the goodness, the tolerance, harmony and positive message of Islam to prove that those minorities who are perpetrating crimes in the name of Islam are not following true teachings of Islam. Mufti Menk He called on people to make positive use of social media, urging them to refrain from reacting to a negative situation in a more negative way. Subhanallah, learning manners has become a lost art, unfortunately. If you guys remember, once on an Instagram live, a Muslim woman was speaking in a disrespectful way, calling him names and telling him that he mixes truth with falsehood. I oh, I, know, I heard about this. Since I was quite young, since I was like 13. However, as I started to learn the deen, I came across some stuff he said, which was completely contradicting Islam. In the dunya, you can't just be sitting at home and giving dawah like this. This is not the way to go. There, there's like actions that we have. They killed 3,000 people, but these are the things you don't see in the news because of the depth of sheikhs like yourself. You come on and blabber, but we see no action. I want to tell you something. This is not being emotional. I'm trying to, I'm trying to speak for all these idiots who actually follow you. People wow. come to you, and you're setting up a bad example. Okay, my sister, just that one point, if I can just uh, put forward something. You know, my sister, thank Allah that he has allowed you to grow in a beautiful way. Uh, and we're all, I'm very, I'm quite strict on myself, but I tell you what, we have to reach out to people who are not on our level and, you know, people who are not on your level. Not everyone thinks the same and not everyone is the same. The whole world is different. And to be able to empower people and reach out to them using a beautiful and the method is part of the teachings of the Prophet ﷺ because if you look at how he spoke to various categories of people, it was always different. So subhanAllah, it's it's amazing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, has allowed us uh, different understandings to be able to reach out to others to bring them closer and closer to Allah. So uh, there are people who are right now who say La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, they are Muslim, they they, they do believe in Allah and they're weak, weak in the sense that they haven't been able to practice okay. quite a lot of things sometimes. Subhanallah, the way he handled that situation was very kind and he did not lose his cool. Not at all, wow. It's easy to lose your cool and as we are young, we think it's better to teach a bitter lesson. But it takes greater self-control and courage to have patience and promote peace, especially when people are hitting out at you verbally. Even the non-practicing folk looks up to people like Mufti Menk, subhanallah. On his social media platforms, every day there's a daily dose of motivational quotes. In this day and age, when social media is on our backs, what a beautiful way to help and reach out to people. MashaAllah, Mufti Menk talks about clean fun like picnicking with children, spending time with family, 
mountain climbing, biking and also skydiving. Take your kids out inshallah go somewhere spend the time with them the day go picnicking we do skydiving mashallah <laughs> skydiving this is clean fun uh, people fun, wonder man. why on earth did you go skydiving well i'm talking about it today and that's what i'm telling you that you know the alternatives for our children what are they it may not be something as uh, difficult as a skydive but it will be something that will keep them occupied they have something to talk about you know really because it's better than a nightclub and it's better than so many other things that they want to do that that sometimes their friends pressurize them into doing pets bring joy whether it's cats ducklings rabbits etc it seems mufti mank has some pets at home as posted on his youtube channel mashallah reaching out to the creation of allah brings more love and kindness Kindness is a mark of our faith, brothers and sisters. Something important is focusing on common heritage, where some of us instantly jump to differences. May Allah Subhanahu wa Taala unite us. Amin. In the words of Mufti Mank, we need people of different faiths and sects to come to an understanding. Right. We don't need different sects to come together in terms of giving up their ideologies. We have to come to an understanding that what I believe is correct and I will remain with it and others have the right to remain with what they believe is correct. Yeah. Subhanallah. Brothers and sisters, Allah has honored all the children of Adam. We should come together as human beings and we all need the same motivations. Irrespective of our religion and belief, we all need happiness, contentment. I would end by quoting Perhaps the purest and deepest form of love is having someone praying and supplicating for you without you even knowing Mufti Mank May Allah bless Mufti and grant him with goodness and happiness Amen That's it for today guys I hope you liked the video Tell us in the comment section what is something you learned from Sheikh Mufti Mank We would like to hear from you Please hit the thumbs up button subscribe to the channel and share this video to your friends and family until next time assalamu alaikum may allah guide us may allah strengthen us my brothers my sisters i plead with you to become more conscious of the way you use your tongue wallahi it will solve a lot of your problems when you die people will remember you for the good words you used to utter they will remember you because you made them feel good you made them feel worthwhile with us those who are connected to us so closely we make them feel unworthy we make them feel totally useless right. it is a sign that we need reformation ourselves you know this video right here was honestly a big example of why i think from the first time i found out about mufti meng why i watch a lot of his content and why i i, I look up to the guy and I enjoy a lot of what he says and it and it really sits in it and it and it connects. And it's not like he's teaching some false uh, religion like he's accused of and I've seen other comments of on some of his videos saying that you know Mufti Mank he is uh watering down Islam. He's not really uh speaking it with like the punch that people are used to. And the thing is Mufti Mank has his approach. It doesn't mean that that approach is going to be the exact same as somebody else. For example, let's take Ahmed Didat, who is no longer alive, but his approach was a little bit more direct and he took part in a lot of debates and really cut through some of the, you know, contradiction when it came to other faiths uh, and also defended Islam, but he was very straightforward in that. And a lot of people, so it worked for some people, but for a lot of people, it was like, you know he's insulting us we don't feel good one approach now here's mufti mank and i think they're on the same team here you know if somebody's sharing islam they're on the same team as someone else who's sharing islam they may just may be different approaches you know mufti mank he doesn't come from it uh, like that this whole scholarly 
uh, background that is all like, you know, sharing the references and, you know, he, he doesn't really focus on comparative religion like somebody like Dr. Zakir Nayak or uh, Ahmed Didat used to do. Uh, not like that at all. It's it's uh, a little it's it's different. You know, it's a little bit more palpable for people who aren't necessarily into those debates and into that type of language. He uses common language, very simple, and he appeals to a wide range of people. A lot of non followers of Islam actually follow Mufti Menk. Is he watering down Islam? I don't think so. I think he's just sharing it in a way that is beneficial for people and empowering for people, not trying to leave people feeling bad or like, see, look, I ended you. I finished you. Look, see, look at the contradictions in your book. That may have its place, but this is why Mufti Mek, again, he's becoming a lot more popular. Not that it's a popularity contest, but it's just people are drawn to that approach because more and more people are just tired of the the insult, tired of the... In Christianity, there's this term called Bible thumping, uh, Quran thumping in this case, right? People are just kind of getting tired of that. They're, a lot of people are just leaving religion because th they feel so judged. But someone like Mufti Mek is like, wow, I don't actually feel judged but okay maybe i'm gonna listen to more of what he says and hmm, okay that appeals to me maybe i should try that in my life and apply that in my life and see like oh maybe islam is a lot different than what i thought it was i say he's on the same team like all these other uh people who are spreading islam it's just everybody plays a different role on the the football field football soccer you know there's the the midfielders uh, they serve a purpose there's the uh, the goalie he serves a purpose there's the the forward you know left wing right wing or maybe that's a hockey term left field right field <laughs> <laughs> defensemen as well the coach all of them are literally on the same team but all of them play a different uh, role or function like the coach is, isn't actually on the field he's the one that's uh telling the players what to do subbing out subbing in new players the goalie he's able to touch the ball with his hands but the other players can't touch the ball with his hands all have a different role and purpose but for the one common goal to win the game and if the goal is to really spread Islam and have more and more people see the light of Islam, then you got to rely on multiple different methods, not just one method and thinking that that's the only way. So I I've said this time and time again, but it it's great to hear, you know, somebody like Mufti Menk saying it. It's like uh, a Mufti or a Sheikh says it and then we're able to take that in a video and say, like, listen, what I've been saying, Sheikhs and, and Muftis are saying. Yeah, alright guys, so hopefully you enjoyed this one. Uh, let me know what you thought down below in the comments section. And uh, don't forget to leave a like before you head on out of here. And I'll catch you guys in the next episode where you look at another topic relating to religion and uh, spirituality. See you guys soon.